Hello everyone, Taylor Drake here with New Horizons Ministries. We just finished reading God is Not Great by the late atheist Christopher Hitchens. Now, this is not actually a great argument against why God is not great. More than anything, it seems to be almost a rant. <laughs> almost like almost like Christopher Hitchens is preaching to the atheist choir about why God isn't great and how religion poisons everything. And yet his arguments behind why he believes this can be boiled down to two things. The first one is misinterpretation of what the Bible actually says and bad hermeneutics. Now, that's not to say that his critique of other religions is bad. In fact, his critique of Islam is really, really good. But then he takes that same type of understanding of Islam and applies it to Christianity at, for his critique, and it just kind of falls falls flat. He does what um, Richard Dawkins and Sam Harris does. They ask questions of the Christian, and then the Christian explains to them that's not the right question, and then they answer the question anyway, and Hitchens is like, ah, oh, see, I told you, that's, it's madness. But it's really not madness. Hitchens just doesn't like the answers that Christianity is providing him, or that Christians are providing him. He also picks and chooses what Christian sources he references, and he shows Christianity in the extreme, the the uh, <laughs> the crazies and the out there, the the people that are on the fringes of Christianity, um, and just having at it, um, saying that these people see these are the norm, this is what Christianity is about, and it really it really isn't. So the first issue is that he just greatly misinterprets a lot of Christian um, doctrines and principles, and he has bad hermeneutics for the Bible and what it actually says. The second thing is actually one of the dominant ideas within this new wave of atheism, again by Dawkins and Harris and Hitchens as well as some others, and that's ultimately this. God doesn't exist and we're angry at him. This book is just angry. He's he's just angry, and he's ranting, and he's going on. Now, he's an amazing author, and I found myself laughing, actually, with what he was saying, because he's very witty. He's a journalist. He's not an apologist. He's not a theologian. He's not a philosopher. He is an journey he's a he's a journalist so great with words an amazing wordsmith a great order but unfortunately all the reasons behind why he doesn't believe god exists are easily answered his problem with intelligent design or his problem with why is there evil in the world or his problem with why did god allow things like slavery or genocide which isn't actually what happened but he refuses to accept the answers that christianity gives so number one bad interpretation of scripture and also bad hermeneutics. And then second, he's angry at God for not existing, which is always a weird thing to read and to understand. Now, would I encourage everyone to read this book? No, actually, I, I, I wouldn't. Um, Christopher Hitchens is will consider himself to be very intellectual. And his writing style is very journalistic, but it's very heady. He makes a lot of references to um, mythologies and, and, and other sources that maybe not everyone knows about. Um, it's an enjoyable read, but again, this is kind of a hard read. This is what I would consider to be um, an attempt to be in intellectual uh, atheism. Now, he's no Bertrand Russell, who I think is one of the best atheists writers out there. Uh, and he's no Frederick Nietzsche, who I think is the greatest atheist writer of all time. Um, but I don't know if everyone should read this, mainly because, like me, I just got angry, really angry at the book. I think I threw it across the room a couple of times, not because I disagreed with him, not because it was poorly written, but really just because he's asking questions that have already been answered, but he's demanding more answers to the already answered questions, which is really odd, and that's really weird that he's just not satisfied with the question, or really the answers to the questions, so he's demanding more which there isn't. But interestingly enough, he never takes his own method of critique and analysis of religion and applies it to atheism. Because if he did that, I find that he would um, come up with more and more problems with atheism than he does with religion, especially Christianity. So should you read this? I think so. It explains how, well, not explains, but I think Christopher Hitchens really captures the voice of animosity and antagonism towards Christianity. He's very blunt. He's very mean, and he really doesn't care about how you feel about certain topics. He's going to tell you what he thinks and how he feels, regardless of how you think and how you feel. And I think that's actually encouraging. Now, most atheists aren't going to sound like him which is a good thing. More than anything else, they're going to be open to the concept and the idea of God. They're not going to be like Hitchens, who has completely shut himself off and is bitter and angry uh, and has great animosity towards religion. 
uh, in general. Now, he attacks all religions, Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, um, but mainly and obviously he's going after Christianity. Uh, but his critique of Islam is fantastic. His critique of Buddhism and Hinduism, they're, they're really well done. But then something happens when he gets to Christianity and this critical thinking just it kind of changes and it almost becomes an emotional rant more than anything else. So should you read this book? I'd like for you to. I don't know if everyone should, but I would encourage you if you are a pastor, uh, a scholar, or a Christian who's really wanting to understand how this militant atheism thinks and sounds, this is exactly the book for you to check out and to read. So our next book is going to be The Pedagogical Theory of the Hebrew Bible. Pedagogical. That's right. By IPHC's very own Dr. Adrian Hinkle, who is um, a professor at Southwestern Christian University. Um, this was actually her doctoral dissertation over across the pond in Europe and is now being put into several books and several volumes. Now, don't let this word pedagogical, don't let it freak you out. It comes from the word pedagogy, and pedagogy is simply a philosophy and the art of teaching. In fact, for those of you who are educators, you had to take a pedagogy class to learn how to teach. So what does it mean, this pedagogy theory? of the Hebrew Bible. Well, quite simply, not only does the Bible teach us who God is and who we are, but the Bible also teaches us how to teach about God and who we are. That the Bible provides us methods on not just uh, who this God is, not only teaching us, but also teaching teachers how to teach about God. So pastors and theologians and philosophers and scholars and small group leaders, I encourage you to get this book. It is on Amazon. I just got to leave a review. Uh, I'm, I'm finishing up reading it. It's very good, and we'll talk more about it at our next book review. So pick it up, The Pedagogical Theory of the Hebrew Bible. Thank you very much, and we'll see you guys next time.